if you're lactose intolerant, you can't watch this movie because it's got so much cheese. Sorry, yeah, I gotta go. You guys are gonna do this on your own. No. Nope, end it there. You agree 100%. I'm right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Flix Fellas. I am your host for this episode, Joey. With me are my former friends, Kevin and <laughs> James. <laughs> so rude. So the timeline for the, like, the listeners here, there it's like so confusing because this poll would have come out like months before this episode. Oh, yeah, it's released. way before, but I'm still mad. Months later, At I'm least still mad. two months. <laughs> yeah. The fellas are feuding. Yeah. at this yes. moment yes i'm for also some, mad in general because of this fucking movie but we'll get into it for some backstory we released a poll today on the day of recording august 31st about our bonus episode where james and i drafted apocalypse teams and not only is my mm-hmm. team losing but kevin is actively against my team which is not fair because my team is objectively better more well-rounded and more likely to survive an apocalypse because we I don't texted, have old men who are about to die. I I te- don't even give me that shit. I texted one person to vote for James because you cheated. I have no idea what you're talking about. I <laughs> <the fifth. laughs> Joey you is the curator of not one <laughs> four different accounts that you run. That's cheating. <laughs> You did That's that called Joey, trying. <laughs> I can tell you, I can tell you, Joey. I did not take this. I like. I was like, oh well, like it'll be a fun thing, like whatever. Like let's see what the listeners think. And then I'm like, oh, I'm getting blown out of the water. That's crazy. And then I look at who's voted, and I'm like, oh, it's <laughs> it's Joey four times and like two other people. <laughs> Joey four times and Joey's sister once. <laughs> Which I didn't ask her to vote for me. She just did it on herself. So, sus. So, uh, okay, so uh, sorry, but James. That did your right mom vote you, for you? Right, but <laughs> that ha- but literally that like that happened first. So you it can't was, compl- like you can't ironic like, timing. I didn't ask her to vote for me. She just voted. So listen, James we'll def- see. We don't know now. The listeners know, but we don't know who won. Yeah, we'll this is a very wins. outdated um, debate because, Content. like we said, it's. <laughs> It's literally like months literally two before. months old at this point. All but, right, well, let's bring it back to the present, Joey. Let's, let's talk about bring the movie it back we're to the about present. Today. today, we're talking about the movie Vacation Friends, a Hulu original film released on August twenty seventh, directed by Clay Tarver. Writers are Tom Mullen, Tim Mullen, and Clay Tarver, starring Lil Ray Howery, Yvonne Orji, John Cena, and Meredith Hagner. Yes, her last name is Orgy. Okay. <laughs> Kevin I, saw Kevin laugh. Kevin. I saw Kevin laugh. I saw Kevin laugh. The movie is about, honestly, I think everybody knows what this movie is about just from the title of it, but I'll read it anyway. It's about a couple who meets up with another couple while on vacation in Mexico, but their friendship takes an awkward turn when they get back home. I hate that description. That is the IMDb. Uh, logline for this movie it's vague vague it's dead <laughs> accurate to the movie because <laughs> the movie is kind of just predictable storyline based on the title it's friends you meet on vacation who you don't actually intend to be friends with in your real life so without spoiling let's get into some first reactions <laughs> Send i want to start me, with Joe. okay james let's go you first no haha <laughs> 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 kevin it's my turn so, uh, this movie, uh, I thought it was okay. Um, I think I like, I thought I love, uh, what's the, the protagonist's name in the movie? Um, John Cena. No, no Marcus. Cena. Marcus. <laughs> Marcus. I love that actor. Like the guy that plays Marcus is hilarious. And I don't think this is necessarily his funniest movie, but I've seen him in a lot of like a few other things, like a few other like comedy based things, and it's very he's very funny. Did what you else? think um, Get Out was, was funnier? Name, what? <laughs> so did you think Get Out was funnier? I'm not talking about Get Out. No, he was in the new. Um... <laughs> oh shit! Was he the friend in Get he, Out? He's the TSA agent yeah. who saves the day mm-hmm. in Get Out. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Lil yeah, Ray How- in... Howery. Howery. Sure. Um, Howery. But he was great. Um, I liked, there's a couple weird twists that I thought were very predictable. And then some that I was like, this is completely unnecessary. Um, but I liked John Cena's character a lot. Um, 
I was not a fan of his wife in the movie. I'm going to say that. Like, I found her character, like, chaotic in a bad way. Like, I feel like it was kind of like, there was times where I feel like she kind of chimed in or said something, and it was, like, crazy and, like, it was crazy, like, I like the concept of it. It was just the execution I was not a huge fan of. Um, and that was a lot of the movie. Like, a lot of this movie is about just kind of like what Joey said is the interaction between these two couples and, like, the crazy antics they get into. So, like, if you're really only focusing around four people in this movie and then everyone else is kind of, like, you know, erroneous situations that the couple, the two couples find themselves in. So, Overall, okay. Uh, definitely not writing uh, writing home for this one. This was not winning any Oscars, but uh, I didn't I didn't not like it, and I will send it to Kevin. This movie was objectively terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, this movie was like just straight bad. Like I like there was it was a waste of an hour and thirty five minutes. And it's like short. that's a pretty short movie. That's a, a short, short movie. movie. Felt like I was sitting here for like it felt like forever, and I had n- like there was not one moment where I was like, oh, okay, maybe it was worth the hour and a half. Like I promise you, I didn't laugh out loud once. Once I think I was stone faced. Maybe smiled at the brother at the the wife's brother. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I forget He's his funny. name. Garrett, I think. Uh, Gabe, yeah, something Gabe. like that. Gabe, yeah, yeah. he would. He might have got a smile, but like a soft smile, and that was it. Like there was no point in this movie that like I thought was enjoyable. I like John Cena too, and I really wouldn't even contribute it to the actors because I think they were all fine. There was nothing about them that like annoyed me. I just think the movie was so basic and like literally just cookie cutter. And the comedy wasn't even there that, like, makes up for it being a cookie-cutter movie, you know? So I think yeah. the writing... I agree, Kevin. I think the writing for John Cena was really bad. Like, especially bad. For all But of I think his delivery was very good. Like, I think he, like, he had one of the more notable... Like, I think the delivery of his lines was funny because it was very, like... He said things unapologetically, which I thought was, like, very funny. Like, that's the only time I really thought was funny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I, I agree. I don't think his delivery was terrible i don't think there was anything wrong like it's 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 also john cena like acting so like take that with a grain of salt yeah but um like i i really just didn't find it funny at all and i like it was so cookie cutter that it's almost annoying to watch because you're like this you literally know the formula to this movie like everybody knows it everybody's seen it so if it's not funny why am i sitting for a half hour watching this movie so, I will chime in now. I am definitely in the middle of you. I lean more towards Kevin, but I'm not so far extreme hatred on this movie. I think it's exactly what Kevin said. It's cookie cutter. It's We've seen this all before. And like James said, there's four characters in it that you really want to sell and bring home. The main character of Marcus, he is not totally likable, in my opinion. Like he, no. you're not really rooting for him because he seems like a whiny type of character. His wife is, is more exciting, whiny. but every time she like starts to speak, they like cut the scene or like yes, I move that's away so from hard. her. Yeah. I was like, yeah, they really yeah. should have sold her more. And then the couple of John Cena and um, his wife in the movie Meredith Hagner, Ron and Kyla, we'll, we'll call them by their, their Kyla, character yeah, names. That was definitely Ron right. and Kyla. I think their acting is overdone but on purpose like i don't think it was like it's it's not hilarious it's not funny like you know what they're going to say you know that there's these like quick band like they're going for the shock value which is not shocking because Mm -hmm. we've seen this before now Mm -hmm. in my research for this movie i learned something that made sense to me this movie was originally supposed to be made in 2005. Yeah, I saw that. Wow. Too. Yes. Wow. So, now, James, I hope you didn't see the. Uh, I was going to say, I have, a, I have another game, and I think James probably ruined it now, but. Um, I'll play it. Okay. So that to me just right away makes sense because this is a movie that would have played well in 2005. Now, 
the original two actors who were supposed to be the stars of this. James oh, knows who guess, it is because he loves. You get to guess. I will tell you this. It is a white actor and a black actor. Yeah, that's the formula. And they were very relevant. Still relevant today. In 2005? Like, yes. You know who they are today. Right? Like You definitely know their names. But they were definitely much more like prominent I think. they're definitely bigger name actors than the two well it's not it's movie. not kevin hart because kevin hart wasn't doing anything in 2005 that's a kevin hart role if i've ever seen one 100%. Um, so let me think wow so the so, white actor wait can i also point out yeah. based on the actors that they are leads me to believe and i have no evidence of this or facts or information or knowledge that the roles were supposed to be reversed, that the white couple was supposed to be the main character and the black couple was supposed to be mm. the fun. Yeah, that changes I could see that. I could see that. I could see that. That the black couple was supposed to be fun? Yes. The, yeah, they were, they were supposed to be like the, like, the hmm. not. That like, changes yeah, my process I don't know if that's true or not, completely. but based on who these two men are, I would believe that to be true. That changes my thought process completely. Well, my first, my gut reaction for the the white guy then would be like an Adam Sandler. No, no. not Strike a comedy one. actor, not a comedy. He's not, actor. uh, no, nah, not really. Hmm. Which is why I don't, th- which is why I think he would have been more of the straight and narrow type of guy. I'll give you five seconds before the viewers get bored. And I'll tell you who it is. Yeah. One more I, guess. You know, I, I'm sure it's gonna like kick me, like I'm gonna kick myself in the ass, but like my brain power is zero right now, and I honestly have could have like a million guesses. I feel like. So, the white actor is Nicolas Cage. Which oh yeah, totally. I could see him playing the character. Of I could Marcus, see him, but I could not see him John playing Cena. the crazy character too. Have I you don't... seen Kick Ass? I've seen a he's, lot of his. Yeah, but he's a very serious. He's, he's like the crazy, only serious kick. Go ahead. I just don't think he it was as believable as like a drug pushing thrill seeking oh, see character. I'd have to see what two thousand and five Nick Cage looked like. When was when when he was in Ghost Rider, when did that come out? God, two thousand six. You might you might be right there, James. That has to be two thousand six. No, I think that was later. No, it's two thousand five or two thousand six. Ghost Rider Ghost came Rider? out two thousand seven. I mean, he could yeah, be see? the crazy guy if that's two, if that's okay. two thousand six. He, he could be the side. Anyway, who's the black actor? Will Smith. Oh, okay, totally. Which, like, yeah, I, I could see it going either like way. Too I really cool could. of a guy to be like this. I actually, Joey, I feel like he's not, but I feel like he plays a very cool, like, like. Will Smith is very good at cool, calm, collected. You know what I mean? Like even in like, and I haven't seen a ton. I mean, I've seen a lot of Will Smith roles because he's in a lot of stuff. But like, I feel like a similar, at least the only chaos energy I really see Will Smith bring is when he plays Jay in Men in Black, or maybe. Well, in, and that's like, the thing. He would have been a lot younger back then. Yeah, so I yeah. feel like it would I have mean, made Men in Black was what a little more sense. Yeah. So I could see either of them going as like the serious and like I could see them flipping roles, you know, or not. Mm-hmm. Or not. Yeah, you're right. I could see it either way, but I don't see him as like the nerdy guy who the dad doesn't approve of. Cuz no. think about Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. He was like That was earlier though. That was like 19 That was 90s. Was, like, oh. But Men in 90s. Black was 1997 the first. Really? Movie. The yeah. first Men in Black was 97? Yeah. Wow. And the second one didn't come out till five years later in 2002. Anyway, this isn't a Men in Black yes. podcast. No. This is a Vacation Friends podcast. Very fun fact, Joe. I did like that fact, actually. Thank you. Okay, so let's get to our first reaction. About why this movie is trash? No, no, no. We're going to no. decide if we want to press play or keep scrolling, oh. Kevin. Oh, you know yes. This. I forgot we're not in the spoiler section yet. Correct. So let's go back to James. So I think for this one, soft keep scrolling for this one. Soft keep scrolling. Because I didn't hate it. I really didn't. Like, I I didn't hate it, but I definitely don't think it's, like, it's not something I'd be like, oh, man, you got to watch this, you know? So soft keep scrolling for me. Kev? Uh, This is, like, literally just don't even look at the title card of this movie. Like, just keep scrolling. Like, 
there's no it's a waste of time i i don't know there's a million other movies that follow this formula that are probably better so scroll here i am again in the middle um (laughs) i definitely lead towards keep scrolling however i do think there is a right time for this movie and i'm thinking like thunderstorm or snowstorm where you're locked in the house you can't go out do anything and you really don't want to watch like a deep movie or a good movie. You just want to watch like trash, like movie put on the background. Even maybe, maybe <laughs> I, you had press play on this movie. <laughs> Can we talk about how if everything... I'm stuck inside during a snowstorm, I'm not watching a, just a shitty fucking movie. I'm still gonna watch okay, something you're good. Right. No, a, sh- a snowstorm is gonna be a good movie. But maybe this is just like a late night movie where you just need to like you don't want to keep scrolling through Netflix and you want to or Hulu you know? and you just want to watch something. So, um, what's it called? The, I feel like there's a lot of times when like, I'll go watch, like, I know a movie is shitty. Like I know for a fact, I'm like, I know, like I watched the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. I knew it was going to be bad. Like I was, mm-hmm. I was a hundred, I could not have been more confident that it was going to be bad, but I was like, I have to watch it. You know? Yeah. This like does not try to sell you as like the next wedding crashers or Step Brothers. Like, it's not going to be or a great even like Adam movie. Sandler type. Like I feel like this is like an Adam Sandler type movie. Like I think Kevin was like kind of spot on with like I could see him taking one of these roles. But like I think it's just not as well done. You know what I mean? Like I, I just it's there's a lot of other movies I'd watch before this one. Yeah, agreed. Which is why it should be just an automatic keep scrolling. <laughs> Well, that wouldn't be fun, Kevin. <laughs> All right, we'll see. We'll see what happens when we double down at the end of the yeah. episode. Okay, so let's take a quick word from our sponsors, and we will be right back. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Roll right into that one. Roll usually, right on in. Usually, we take some time to chat about the first reactions. Joe just skipped that. And well, James <laughs> is on a time <laughs> crunch today, so I want to make sure we're sensitive of his time. Yes, I do. You said that. <laughs> he said, said he could that? auto draft. <laughs> it's auto draft. Who cares? <laughs> okay, that's fair. We're in prime fantasy football season here. <laughs> yeah, again, we're like way delayed, it's but still it's, August. <laughs> we're yeah. busy guys, so we try to pre-record these shows for you people, so that we never miss a week, and that high quality content is delivered each and every week. You're welcome. Now let's get into the. Is it nit and gritty? Not not some nitty gritty. Nitty gritty. Nitty gritty. Nitty gritty. The nits and gritty. <laughs> or, I was like, it's not <laughs> the nits. The nits and grits. <laughs> the nits and grits. That's gonna be our new saying. Let's get into the nits and nuts grits. And bolts, like and the meat and potatoes. The nuts and grits. N- the the meat and bolts. Yes. So let's talk about the movie. <laughs> the spaghetti and pancakes. <laughs> the the nitty bolts. <laughs> okay, yeah, James. So Kev, you seem you like this? yeah. Or yeah. Right, let's start with Kevin. Kevin's okay, passionate. Wait. Kevin's so got vinegar. I have a I have a prompt for you guys before we get into why I hate this movie so much. Uh, have you guys ever gone on vacation and made vacation friends? And yes. have has it been ever been like a nightmare? Like, did it turn out to be a nightmare? Yes. Both, Do you want to both, tell that story? Yes, both. So I was a kid, right? I was like a little kid, uh, and I went on this vacation, right? And you, like, I was not old enough. So we went on like a cruise with my cousins, right? And I wasn't old enough to hang out with my cousins, but I was I was older than my brother. So it was like my brother was like hanging out with my parents because he was you young. Always have been, my always will be. Were older, yeah, that's what it is, man. I'm in the middle. Um, but it was just me, right? So I go to this like teen thing on the cruise ship, and it was like I met this dude who like I thought was cool because he was like playing Mario Kart or something like that. And I played. I was like I hung out with him the first day, right? And uh, he was what's 45 years old. He was 45 years old. No, I mean, he was like, I think I was like, I think I was like 13 or 12, and he was like, I, I just realized what you said. <laughs> He's just like a guy. Um, no, but whatever. Like, there wasn't a huge age difference, whatever. But like, the fucking, the guy, like, it was one of those things. Like, at, the more I talked to this kid, I was just kind of like, I don't want to talk to this guy anymore. Like, it's just not interesting, and it's like very you have to try a lot to talk to this guy. Uh, and then I was like, all right, man, good talking to you. And then I left. And then like, I, ca- I saw him fucking everywhere. You know what I mean? Cause you're, you're stuck on the ship. You can't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. So it's like, and like, it became a thing where it was like every other minute he wanted to hang out because I was like, he ran, like 
his age and he was like, I need to be entertained. And it was just a fucking nightmare. <laughs> but all right. So hold on. Before... I like that one, James. Go ahead, Joe. So I always traveled with a, my massive family. Like all my cousins are similar to my age. So we did everything together. We had people. So we never actually like sought out friends or people that we like would hang out with or one of us would go off and like become friends with type of thing. But typically it was like our cousin group was our group and we did everything together breakfast lunch dinner hung out did extract uh, attractions all that stuff there were times when kids who were by themselves only children or in that weird age gap in their families kind of like james <laughs> who uh-huh. would come out and try to hang out with us naturally you see a group of kids. it was just me it was me. <laughs> yeah. But naturally, you see a group of kids like your age, you think, oh, that's going to be an easy group to jump into. But we were a very, like, close-knit cousin group that we weren't looking for, like, I, we weren't trying so to get people to come You guys were the assholes? In. So we were the assholes sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> looking back, I can see this now, and I apologize to anyone who I may have... It's okay, I don't Joey, think I, I was ever mean to anybody, but <laughs> what'd you say? It's okay, Joey. I forgive you. Yeah, you, you, just, you just don't include all. There was your a cruise of twenty six. Harry Potter night. <laughs> it was just this weird kid. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> um, we uh, here's my quick vacation friend story, and then we'll get into it. But we uh, we went to the Dominican um, with like for spring break when I was in college uh, with like Connor and Allie and Colleen and Danielle. Uh, and we made vacation friends there, but it turned like crazy. Like they were nice. It was like this guy and his friend who was a girl and then, but they weren't dating. And then we were at like the club on the resort the one night and like all hell broke loose. Apparently he was trying to hook up with someone who was like married. And I found him in a stairwell crying because he thought that the husband of this chick he was trying to hook up with, like, wasn't good to her. And he's literally, like, a 40-year-old man sobbing in a stairwell. And I'm, like, consoling this dude <laughs> who I've never met before. And I was just, like, stuck. Like, I couldn't go anywhere because we were already vacation friends. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like, I need to go. Like, I need to get the fuck out. <laughs> also, how old were you at this point? I was, like, 21. I was like, I need to go drink more. This fucking <laughs> old dude is crazy crying about nothing in a stairwell wait yes vacation friends are a real thing and this resonated with me okay one last vacation friend story um that you just reminded me of when my family went to cabo mexico where this movie takes place i don't know if it's cabo but it's mexico (laughs) and there was again tight-knit group we're all very similar in age currently we're 24 to 30 at the time, it was, I think, 2013. So we're talking eight years ago at this point. We're Jesus. high school, end of high school, early college age range. And there was a volleyball court in our, um, in our. it was a pool volleyball at our hotel. So we're nice. playing, and this old couple, probably like 50s, 60s, like straight up like tan, like sh- Guido, pe- Guido pe- couple, like come mm-hmm. up to us and they're like let's all play volleyball together and like we're like okay sure whatever vacation friends mm-hmm. then they're like how about the losing team has to buy the other team shots and like just getting us all like really drunk like they're just constantly playing games with us and then finally we're like okay this is getting weird like we gotta go so we're like <laughs> yeah. oh like we have dinner reservations we gotta go And they're like, oh, what? You're not going to come banana boating with us? Like, we have a whole boat, like, reserve. Like, they try. It was straight up like this. And we're like, like, no, we're children. We're going to (laughs) go. Well, you also have, like, what's in that. Yeah, in that scenario, though, too, is, like, because you have such, like, like, you and your family are such, like, a dominant. Like, you have so many people that you literally are just, like, the whole party, like, looks at each other and are like, we're not going to hang out with those people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the then, tribe like, the has spoken. And <laughs> gets up and walks out of the room. <laughs> that is so funny. Yes. Which, like, when you do that to someone your own age, it comes off and can be kind of asshole-ish. When you do these to people three times your age who are creepy. Yeah, it's kind of It's creepy. called safety. You probably leave. <laughs> yeah, you should yeah. probably leave. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's get back to this movie now. Um, 
James, you had some positive moments. Why don't we start with you? Let's talk a little bit. Yeah, we got. Let's talk about the light before we get into the, you know, <laughs> the bad. Before we start you know. shitting on this deeply. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it's just gonna. I feel like this is one of those. It's just like a fire. As soon as it starts percolating, everybody's gonna be like, "Ah, and this sucked, and this sucked, and this sucked." So what I did like about this movie were I think that there was a lot of in John Cena's character. I found a lot of like I did. I didn't laugh out loud. But I rarely do when I'm watching a movie by myself. Um, but I did find there were like a lot of kind of humorous moments where he would be talking about something ridiculous. And then it would be like he delivers it in such a way that it's like confident and totally serious, even though what he said is absolutely fucking ridiculous. You know? Um, and I love that stuff. Like I love whole, like ridiculous humor. So um, I thought that was very funny. Um, there was definitely a lot of like very like – forced punchlines like especially from his wife that i was like this is not great um but i liked i did like uh what's it called um mark what's marcus's wife name again i can't remember her name uh, emily emily uh emily's character i thought was really good and like was way more relatable than marcus um, but I agree, Joey. I was really frustrated that I feel like every time she had anything substantial to say, like they'd either just change scenes or she would get cut off by like the couple being like, oh, like drugs or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just feel like um, I liked. I also feel like they tried to do a lot. Like there's a lot of like scene changes. Like I feel like they spent, what do they spend? Like they spend 30 minutes in Mexico in this movie. And then they spend like the last 50 minutes in at the wedding, like at their wedding, setting everything up. And it's like, you feel like the plot of the movie should have been in Mexico, but it was really just kind of like the preface of the movie was in Mexico. A little bait and, and switch, dude. I think all the, the marketing and everything, cause I'd seen commercials for this and I think all of it, was only in Mexico. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's all. And I was thrown off guard when they were doing the montage through the week, and I was like, shit, what are they leaving for at the end of this vacation? What the hell happens on the last day of this vacation? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm watching the movie really quickly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, this is flying. No, yeah. yeah. But then it literally was, again, that generic plot of, like, things just keep going wrong for this guy because of this other dude who he met, who's like this crazy goofball, and then he tells him off and then realizes that he was the, the friend all along, and then you have to make amends. Like, literally, yeah. sh this fucking movie, you could have written before you finished watching it. You could have wrote it all out. I'm pretty sure I did in my head. I was like, oh, this is going to happen. Oh, this is going to happen. Yeah. Because it happens all the fucking time. Let me interject here and tell you a couple things that I liked about this movie – and that I thought they did better that, like, it's definitely cookie cutter, 100%. Don't doubt it. You can predict almost every moment. But there are some things that I thought they did uniquely, and I will defend it now. Two great lines. First of all, obviously, they see them when they're driving up to the hotel originally, and they see them mm -hmm. jet skiing. Like, you, okay, clearly they're setting the stage. You know you're going to see this couple later. I love yeah. the line. He goes... This is why there's no black paraplegics because we don't do dumb shit like this. <laughs> <laughs> I think he I had a lot of zingers. Down. I, yeah, I feel like Marcus had a lot of zingers, you know? And then the second line that I wrote down that I thought I really liked was when the hotel concierge Attended. manager, whatever his yeah. name is, he was um, looking for hotels for them. And they were like... Yeah, I hear it's the best of the westerns in the area. Yeah, he's talking about the best, like the airport best western, and he's like, "It's the best western around." Western? Yeah. <laughs> I also liked his like whole like we well, we have great relations with other five star uh, hotels. Okay, well, I mean, the four star hotels are just like five star hotels, but a little cheaper, and the three stars are the new five stars. <laughs> that like you know? that to me also like in Kemp's fence That's did funny. seem predictable. That like okay, he's gonna. Obviously, he's not going to get them a room in another five star hotel because that's not going to be the story. Or a four star, and like then it kind of went too far. Where it's like, oh, three stars the same. So, but I did like that ending line where he's like, well, it's the best western and around. But yeah, um, did you think that was bold of him? Of whatever his name, Marcus was going to propose as soon as they arrived on vacation. Like it wasn't like yeah. he wasn't waiting because it's the whole like they basically what happens is Marcus and his uh, long term girlfriend Emily arrive at this resort. 
they go to their like bougie room. It's supposed to have all these things like roses and music and champagne. It's about to be fantastic. And he's planning on like proposing on the spot as soon as they show up in their room. So you know? can I tell you why I did like that? Because I feel like a movie like this, where you expect it to take place all in Mexico and day by day, things get worse and worse for this couple. You kind of expect it to be like, he's going to propose on the last day. And just every day you see cracks in their relationship. And then they falter and then he doesn't propose or they break up or something like that. Whereas yeah. they didn't, they were a strong like couple. They didn't falter. They never, like their relationship was never in doubt, which I feel like is very abnormal for a movie like this usually like that's the problem it's like oh the wedding has to be called off because we got in a fight or because she cheated or i cheated on her or she cheated well, on that, me type of thing that did happen at the end they yeah. faltered at the end but they didn't falter they like, very much grazed over that at the she, end they were they like did. she they did. cheated but it still on happened. him like it was with still it's still the part woman. of the formula and it still happened yes yes but they never fought about it does that make sense? Like, I thought that was insane. I thought yeah. that, like, the fact that that wasn't a bigger deal was, like... What, I that feel the like, girls fucked? Yeah. I feel like that would have been a big fucking deal. Like, the whole thing is, like, he's concerned the entire time that, like, he... Because he thinks no, that see, he was, like, super drunk or whatever and cheated. And, he's, and like, it was predictable that she it. had a secret, too, though. I, so my thought was yeah. that they... He slept, like, Marcus slept like with they, they Kyla kind of thing yeah and yes yeah, so they switched couples. swinger action yeah that's what i thought was gonna be the plot twist and then she was like oh no like us girls like slept together like that i thought i i wasn't expecting that i thought that was a little bit no, I better than the either. cliche of like but i feel it was like it the was one like night was... you didn't tell me i didn't tell you type of thing yeah but like, there was no delivery right like i feel like after the delivery there was like no there was no like recourse that happened that like there was no, like, punishment. There was no real intense – like, it was almost like a relief. Like, everybody, like, was like, oh, like, at least this happened. And Thank I feel God like it's, like, that the girl fucking No, but that's what I'm saying. Like, there's another girl. no – Hot there's... lesbians, I'm in. Like, <laughs> I don't understand. I just don't understand. Like, I feel like there should have been something, right? Like, there should have been, like – he should have been pissed, you know? But, like – I No, he because was, it, was, no, totally, like, it totally. was a relief. It was a relief yeah. to him, though, because he saw it. He, yeah, but not only did I he thought, think I'm he James. cheated, That's like a... he thought he was the father to a baby. Yeah, but then and he figured so out I his wife that's... cheated. <laughs> yeah, like... yeah, I'm, I'm with James. I think it's a little like, like, just almost wrong that they like. Yeah, that, it is. They're wrong. just like, oh, like they like a hot, hot hookup. Yeah, but two she's girls. like she's, she's still not cheated. a lesbian. Is the thing like no. if she no, was no, like no, bisexual, no, 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 no. then I think it would be that, different. Yeah. Where like, oh, she had an emotional no, I'm relationship. Saying, like, I'm, I think what Kevin I think is saying, I'm not, I'm not gay. But if Julia caught me sucking someone's pee pee, <laughs> there would be an issue. Yes. Okay, but that's not the question. What if like that is the question? No, no, no. But what if you were in the same room with Julia? You guys got trashed, and like she started hooking up with another. Girl. Like, I don't think that. Yeah, I'd have a problem with that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'd be I'd like, a... what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you're right, Joe. I'm, that... on, I'm on your side. <laughs> I don't, but, I, but it's not like. Not that there's I, like I, a I gender. Know. No, I just think it's no, like, acceptance here right, for to whatever. To bring it like... back to the movie. To bring it back to the movie. I think that it it was very weird and like didn't feel natural that like. There, like, there wasn't any frustration, you know what I mean? One, that they never, she never talked about it, right? She never told him what happened, you know what I mean? They never talked about it ever again. She never, like, re like she apologizes for it when she gets caught and announces it at her wedding, which was also ridiculous. Um, and, like, there's no frustration, like, there's no, there's no But keep in you know mind, I mean? like, I'm they both were heavily intoxicated. Pro they probably thought they were drugged because, you know, these couple drugged them multiple yeah, times. But but that. he was concerned, but his, his anxiety the whole time is that he fucked up and he accidentally cheated, right? Yes. And she, and like, but he, it could have all been avoided if I she was just honest I would even say it's not cheating, like she, yeah, like, yeah, it was like, you know, <laughs> they're both very intoxicated. The, I mean, not, she no does obviously thought. see it as cheating because she doesn't tell him, so she does, she he, does feel remorse he, about it. Or the guilt. interesting him. thought to me is that that could have been an interesting take on this formula where the guy didn't cheat on the girl and the girl 
I guess, cheated. Like, that would have been a good twist because we're all assuming that he fucked her. Yeah, but it was almost a non sequitur. Yeah, it was, like, almost a It doesn't matter. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, you're right. It doesn't matter, and, like, this movie is still trash regardless of all that. Well, they didn't capitalize. Like, there was no... There was nothing that happened. Like, it just, like, it came out. Everyone was, like, and then, like, everybody moved on, and, like, nobody cared anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which was ridiculous. Like, there was the big blow up that happened, but it was just like that was like coupled with a ton of other frustration. Like, it wasn't really about and that. Also, so that scene still was so predictable of like, oh, he thinks that she, like, when you found out that Ky- Kyla was pregnant, you're like, oh shit, it could be his because, like, we think that they had sex. But then, like, I don't know about you guys, but like, closer to the wedding, like when they were golfing, something keyed it off to me, and I was like, "Oh, he's not—he's not the dad, but he's gonna think he's the dad." Like it was yeah. so predictable. No. Like I never believed that so... he was the dad because it was too predictable. No, right, right. I, it I was thought so that... predictable because yeah, the way I... they were saying it, like, and you helped, like, or and it's because of you. You're like, okay, so something happened that caused them to be able to have a kid. And this miscommunication is going to come out. Like, you see all this stuff happening. And, like, I get, like, like I totally understand formulas work for movies, right? This is a tried and true formula for a movie. But you still have to do something different or do something, like, at least make it funny, like, enjoyable to watch. I just feel like it wasn't that, that they just took the formula. They didn't capitalize on anything, like you were saying. They didn't make any jokes. Literally, like, I, I sound like a snob, and I hate doing that. But, like, I did, I didn't find anything in it really funny um so what about like, the it, I was one just joke the formula where they're on the beach and kyla acts as if she is a long-term prisoner that was of fucked up Cena. that was i didn't laugh i still didn't laugh because i knew it wasn't real it was just like dumb i feel like it was like there was like, no it wasn't reason funny. for it yeah, yeah. So I almost question if that's where the story was going to go and that it was going to become more of a drama, like a murder mystery type of movie and not so heavy comedy. And then when it was, I was like, oh, that was fucked up. They did that. It was predictable that it, they were going to do that or like that it wasn't true. But I was like, oh, maybe if this is true, now we have a real story here. Yeah, it's like and... they dropped this like fucked up line and it's not e- like it's not even clever or funny. Like it's just like. You know what I mean? Like, it's like a, ha ha, go gotcha. for the you were concerned about my health. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it wasn't funny. It wasn't funny. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I have a prompt for you guys. Yeah. Prompt me. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just want to make sure you were all listening. Continue. So, when they're golfing with the brother in law and the brother in law's friend, mm-hmm. and obviously, tool bag John one, tool Cena bag two. is shag bagging him the whole time, mm-hmm. and they get to the end. And he's like, double or nothing, if I hit this green, okay, we're going to imagine it like he thought it was, right? A part of three, probably like 175 yards, 180 yards. He said 375. No, 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 that was for the part four. We're oh, gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to imagine it was the, the part, part three. three that they, mm-hmm. they were originally looking at. Double or nothing, if I hit the green, I win. Would you take that bet? And I did the math. <clears throat> that would have been for $6,800 plus the cost of a Ferrari, which was forty five grand. they said. So would you take that bet? You have to hit the green or you pay fifty one hundred or $5,300. Definitely take not that take that bet. Definitely no. Because or like you get they, that money. Well, well keep in no, mind it, of what their financial situations are. One. No, 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 I'm saying for you personally, yeah, because we, the three of us, well, Joe doesn't golf as much. I was going to say, I, I never golf. Why would I do that? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, for, would for you context, take that bet? Would I take that bet? So for context, like Kevin's talking about a relatively, like for anyone that golfs at like an intermediate level, not a terribly hard shot. Like it's like definitely in the cards for making it happen. Oh yeah. Um, you, I mean, like both of us have hit greens on par threes. Yeah, agreed. And that's what I'm saying is, is like it's not an unheard of shot. So it's like in that scenario, I absolutely don't take it. Like even if they're playing like garbage, you know what I mean? Because like Dude, I may, you, like, make you could all get a Ferrari money. and sixty eight hundred dollars. All you gotta do is wait, hit wait. that fucking green. 
are you saying that I am the brother in this scenario, or I am? No, no, no. In this situation, if you hit the green, you get the fifty three hundred dollars. Oh, I the... would take that bet. Fuck yeah, a hundred. Or, I but if take. you lose, but if you miss, you have to you have to pay that. <laughs> I wouldn't because I don't like to gamble that much. It's too much money. You know what Dude, I mean? Like you could get a Ferrari. Yeah, but you could also lose. Ferrari that's only worth forty five thousand. Like that's like. <laughs> I mean, only clearly there's something 000? wrong with this forty five thousand Ferrari. <laughs> yeah, Ferraris go I for like... a shit ton more than that. Like, yeah, even if a it's used, used Ferrari is definitely not forty five. No, it's yeah. I don't know about you, still Kevin. Six figures. I could tell you, Kevin. I don't know about your situation, but I cannot gamble forty five thousand dollars. I definitely can't gamble forty five thousand dollars. <laughs> But in the off chance I make it, but I would love could. to have forty five thousand dollars, <laughs> and I you? could hit that job. Crippling debt, not crippling yeah. debt. Cri- crippling. I mean, could you like, get payment? You take a loan if you yeah, don't have the forty five grand on you it. You take a gambling loan, like a loan because you gambled oh, all yeah, your money that's away. True. So crippling debt or. You just made like the right answer is no. Fifty three thousand. The right answer is no. I think I'm taking it. <laughs> There's no shot. There's like literally no shot. I take that. Bet. You're not even like a Kev. I saw you golfing out of bags. No offense, but you're not that consistent, <laughs> dude. I can I can hit a par three green. I Period. think you got like a. I think Kevin. At, like I've golfed with you. A not lot. every time. I've golfed with you a lot. I think you have a sixty five percent chance of hitting that green. I'm taking those odds. I'm not. <laughs> perfect perfect conditions no i mean you didn't say that but sure perfect conditions i still think 65 percent. like 60 anyway like... anyway i'm taking it you guys are fools not to well i guess i think not. i could I'm hit a it fool to take that <laughs> dude you might you had some good shots i'm a decent there's shot. an off chance you hit that anyway I love that he cheated movie. on that too even though i was like oh damn like obviously it was predictable well, he, he didn't was... really cheat like he did he hit, hit it, it. He hit it, but he but cheated like, he to be extra to dramatic, in. which I liked. Um, yeah, I like that too. But, again, that's one of those moments where it's predictable. You know he's hustling them. Everybody can see it. And, like, even at the end, it's like... it. The payoff wasn't enough for the whole 10, 20 minutes that that scene was of them, like, sucking. Yeah. And then... Just so he could be like, oh, I made a hole in one, but I cheated. Yeah. Like, it wasn't worth the joke, I don't think. Can we they talk could have about done it better? Yeah. And and the sequence, so like, 100% they could have done that joke better. And I think that was probably one of the most entertaining points of the movie, if I'm going to be completely honest, um, which is doesn't, it doesn't help the score that we're going to give it or like the press player keeps scrolling. Um, but I think, like, what did you guys think of the slow motion, like, mousetrap esque like turn of events that leads to Marcus losing the rings. I thought that was dumb. fucking dumb. Dumb. I thought dumb. That was, D- yeah. The whole yeah. fucking movie was dumb. That was just a particularly dumb. That, that was like yeah. so remember in our episode of Cherry where Kev rants about how annoying um what are the brothers names? The um The Banks or the like it was too ham fisted. You were you were you were complaining how too artsy it was that movie. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, it was too on the nose. Yeah, this movie is not an artsy movie, and they were just like, but what if maybe for this one scene we try to be really artsy, and just do something that's completely stupid, and just waste everyone's time for ten minutes because we know he just got the rings. He's probably going to lose the rings again. Yeah. And That's you could literally works. have done that. You could have done that instead of like the slow motion, like broken up sequence. You could have literally had like him look up at the bird because they have the gag where John Cena can look at a bird and tell if it's going to shit. You know what I mean? Like that's like, which also isn't a funny joke, but like you could literally have cut out the entire like two minutes of content. That's like all the like series of events happen to when the bird flies near them and just him look at the bird and be like, oh, watch out bird. And then like he grabs the guy and he drops the rings and you effectively get the same thing. You know, I dude, literally this movie straight up wasn't funny. Also, that was like they got out of the car. I saw that storm drain and immediately I was like, those those rings are going down that fucking storm. drain." Mm-hmm. And I was like, it, it was almost framed that way. Let me go back and see. I, like literally I was like, it's just so predictable and just not funny that like, I don't know. I don't think I could. I knew the kid naming thing was a thing like. 
as soon as I saw that she was pregnant. I was like, the thing that they want to tell him is they're naming the kid after after Marcus. Like, I knew that immediately. I didn't get that one, but that was predictable. It just was so uncomfortable the whole time because everybody obviously knew what's going to happen. And, like, even the actors were like, we know like, this is stupid. <laughs> It was not good. Like the even the explanation where it's like, oh, I jumped off of the cliff and because I didn't like tuck the particular way that I needed to tuck, like everything got knocked around and now I can have kids again. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, <laughs> can I say though, I did like the fight scene at the wedding. I just that punch was very satisfying, very predictable, hundred mm -hmm. percent predictable. You knew it was going to happen. You yeah. knew brother was going to step up, be an asshole, get hit, and they were going to make a comment about how he had to do it again. But I enjoyed yeah. it. I enjoyed that He's scene. Captain of talk shit get hit. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh God. I'm just getting I'm getting further down in this movie fucking sucks with Kevin. Dude, <laughs> See, yeah, what happened? Dude, I'm literally telling you, especially when you try and think back to like, what was funny about this movie? And you're like, oh wait, it's nothing. <laughs> the answer is nothing. <laughs> this podcast is gonna end up being like how fast can we convince people to cancel their Netflix <laughs> subscription? Yeah, literally, because... this movie side. No, this was... they just got to weed out the shit. This was on Hulu. This, this was, was on Hulu. Hulu. Yeah. And, and yeah. I think that's the point of the podcast anyway, is like this movie is being so heavily marketed right now. Like I've seen commercials for it like a bunch. Yeah, it's So bad. it's like, and like I thought about watching this movie before. So I'm like, like if I'm someone else, I would have wasted their my, my time watching this movie. I would so like, this movie sucks. You so know that's why funny. we're here, so people know, dude. So people know they're trash. And here is a lifelong tip, free for everybody listening, um, that I learned from my grade school music teacher, actually. That Mr. Kaiuchi. Mr. Kaiuchi. <laughs> shout out Mr. Kaiuchi. <laughs> Gotta love Mr. Kaiuchi. He, there was one day we were all talking about a movie that was like advertised like hell, and he said, it's going to be trash. And someone asked him, why do you think it's going to be trash? And he said, because of how much they're advertising it. If you're a good movie, you don't need to heavily advertise. The people will do that for you. Like, they will talk yeah. about it. People will be intrigued by it. But if you have to have seven commercials about it within an hour on every network, on every streaming service, platform, billboards, all that stuff. Like, yeah. those are the people, those are the movies that are going to be trash. Yeah, in recent memory, Suicide Squad did that. Suicide Squad 1 did that a ton. The marketing for that was like it had to be millions and millions and millions of dollars. And that movie, like, just it was just the pacing was super bad. You know what I mean? I, I love popcorn superhero movies, and that movie's just bad, you know? Wait, so Mr. Kabayashi Maru <laughs> thought that, <laughs> what? If you don't market... Uh... Is that a spaceship name? <laughs> no. That, that, no, that's that's a fucking What's Star that? Trek thing. Oh, James! <laughs> That's so sick. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Kaiuchi. Uh, Mr. Kaiuchi. Kaiuchi? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mr. Italian. Kaiuchi Not Japanese. says that if they market a movie a lot, it's going to be bad. I disagree. No, 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 Get no, him no. on this no, fucking no, no. podcast. No. If they Get over, him on this podcast. If they over-market a movie is when it's going to be bad. False. I don't know. I think no. it's a red flag. I don't think it it's immediately a red means it's going to be bad. Well, you got to keep it's in mind of what like kind a... of movie it is. If it's a comedy, yeah. like True. if they have to overmarket a comedy, like it's going to be bad. Dramas, yeah. like Each... indie films that typically end up winning like Oscars, like they're not marketed that much. That they just people are like word of mouth talk about it. Like you maybe see yeah. an ad here or there, maybe one commercial, but like most like big movies, I don't see a ton of marketing for. Unless it's like yeah. Marvel or Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. When they have just like. Honestly, even Marvel, I... like, I don't remember seeing, like, a crazy ton of ads for Endgame. Oh, God, dude. I can't get away from the Shang-Chi trailers right now. They're That's so good, though. I, I cannot wait to see it. Uh, what else is there to even say about this movie? I literally went into this thing, and this is going to be short, because, like, what else? Like, I, this one was so bad. Remember, there was another podcast. We talked about how I can tell uh, one of our movies is bad if I have, like, a ton of notes and remember i had two pages of notes on oh it was the ice road um like but i had this one was like the opposite where it was like so bad that i there didn't was no take notes. notes on it because yeah. there's nothing to like it wasn't there was oh, nothing was to like bad, be like man. oh i gotta remember to write this down about. i gotta talk about this yeah. I gotta, like uh, it was just like straight up predictable straight cookie cutter <laughs> i yeah. kind of wish we stayed with my original movie pick but 
I'm also happy we went with a Hulu film because we don't do. Yeah, that and this is a often. popular movie. Like this is a more popular yeah, movie than the original. Yeah, being advertised, and we should warn mm-hmm. people: don't fall for stay, Hulu's stay marketing. Stay away! Fuck away! Get stay. away! Run! Get um, out! <laughs> yeah. Can we talk about I, I, the, before? Like, I don't know if we're winding down, but uh, there is one more thing I kind of wanted to compare this movie to. So before in the podcast, I said that this movie reminded me a lot of an Adam Sandler film. And I think the reason I said that was because very specifically, this reminds me of the premise of Grown Ups with like a less interesting plot. Because the premise of Grown Ups is like basically a bunch of like lifelong friends come back together, stay at a lake house and like do stuff with their families, right? Like hang out with their families and do like, it's like wholesome family comedy, right? But the reason that movie is funny is because the people in that movie are like, you know, deliver the content well. (laughs) Exactly. Like, the content isn't necessarily that funny. It's just the, like, the actors and the actual, like, you know, the... It's similar to The Office, where it's, like, the people in the scenario make this funny, whereas, like, the situation itself isn't that funny. Like, the situation doesn't need to be funny. You know what I mean? As long as, you know, the characters carry the story, where in this story they just didn't. You know what I mean? It was an uninteresting plot with very not super funny characters, you know, which is why we think this movie is bad because there really wasn't a super redeemable quality to this right. movie that like a grown ups or like even like a movie that has more of a substantial plot hook like Tomorrow War or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, because it does remind me of another Adam Sandler movie, but it reminds me of Just Go With It with that uh, Jennifer Aniston. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Yeah. I think maybe just because that takes place on an island and there's some like beach yeah, It's a vacation movie too. It's a yeah. vacation movie. So I think that's probably why it makes me think of that movie. But mm-hmm. And there's like a wedding. It's Yeah, very similar. It's very Adam Sandler vibes. Now that I didn't think about that until you guys James, mentioned I think it. that was a very astute observation you made that it just lacks like any redeeming qualities, which is why it's a bad movie. Yeah. It wasn't carried by the actors because, like you said, like the actors weren't like these A-list comedians, and then like the writing was terrible. So for like m- chalk this down as like one of the few times me and James agree on something. <laughs> at some point. Can we can we talk about? Where I'm not like this. fuck you, James. Yeah, fuck I want to. You're wrong. I, I want to clip this because Kevin goes, James. I respect you and your opinion. (laughs) (laughs) This will never happen again. (laughs) Okay. Um, Let's get to our final game. I think we've talked enough about this and there's not much to talk about anymore. So Metascore scores. Did you see the Metascore? Because you fucking No, I didn't. I just saw I saw the thing that Joey looked up. I don't know. I'm kind of sussed out by James. He always has this trivia up his sleeve. I'm sussed by James too. But honestly, it was kind of hard to find that meta score <laughs> on IMDb. Oh, really? So that... Joey knows the meta score. <laughs> well, yeah, he <laughs> has to. It's his movie. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Dumbass. Makes sense. That makes sense. Dumbass. Have a Fuck dumbass. You, James. Fuck you. <laughs> okay, James. Why don't you start? Because you've been starting everything this episode. I would like to say 32. 32. Ooh, Kevin. Dude, you were right in the realm I was going. I was going to go 34. You just wow. price is right me, you fuck. He just price is <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's what I was going to go since the beginning. I've been thinking about it this whole podcast, and 34 was the number in my head. So I had a feeling you guys were going to go 30s on this one, and that it's – I figured it was going to surprise you. It's actually a 44. Huh. Okay. It doesn't super surprise me because it had, it's a high-budget movie. So I feel like they like people are a little more lenient, you know? And it wasn't – horrible like it really wasn't like a challenge to get through it just wasn't that great because it was a shorter movie it actually did this movie justice you know what i mean like if you looked at it it's the still longer you look felt at it, very it long is. though which it is did. crazy because well, it, yeah. it's the same Pickle shit happening over movie than this. <laughs> i think it might be if i'm being honest <laughs> I, <think it> <laughs> was. I don't know if i would We'll have to do we another laugh. bonus episode where we I laugh at the movies American we've American. watched. But yeah. yeah, I think American one Metascore says it is, and two, I, I personally think it was funny. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think oh, I disagree, gross. but that is for another episode where we debate that bonus so double episode? down. Oh yes, double, double downs. down. James, we're gonna go eh. second. <laughs> <laughs> Kev? Did, change? Did we get him to change again? No, I'm not changing. I'm still, it's still a fucking... It's, it keeps scrolling. Soft keeps scrolling. Soft? 
It's no, not like no, a hard. it's it's like a hard keep scrolling. Okay, yeah. so oh, we, we did, did it. Change. We did it again. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Peer pressure wins uh, again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm with James. It's a hard scroll. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you go right past this movie. It's a waste it, of your fucking time. It's a keep scroll unless you're looking for that dumb shit. And you know what? I can't even say that because I was like, Joe, oh, you it's... give so many nice accolades. Like you're like you're like my, keep scrolling, but maybe if it's my a Tuesday thought was on the like... Equinox, you can watch it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, my thought was like, okay, maybe like if you're looking for a family friendly movie, this really isn't family friendly. So no, it isn't. There's I a lot wouldn't... of drugs in this movie. A lot of like, drugs. A lot, a lot of, of sex. Yeah. I wouldn't like. Not a lot of sex, but. It's, There's a decent amount of sex in this movie. Yeah, it's not family friendly. If it was family friendly, I would say maybe it's a good soft maybe. press play, but it's not. It is bad. So we're so. going unanimous three times. Keep eh. scrolling. Eh, eh. Sorry, Hulu, <laughs> you let us down. Sucks. <laughs> Sucks. You should have picked a good Hulu movie. We have to watch that Palm Springs sometime. Even though I I'd watch saw that. It, I fucking love Andy love Samberg. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe Kevin. You can pick a movie. I feel like I can't pick one. Like, I know we don't really watch movies we've already seen, and I have seen that, but I'd watch it again. Like, it's not uh, the end of the Mm -hmm. world. But, like, I feel like I can't pick one that I have seen, Mm -hmm. you know? like Yeah, it's not fun. You want to pick something you haven't seen. Right, 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 right. But if you guys picked it, I wouldn't be offended. I like when we pick movies that none of us have seen. Go into it fresh. I agree. Raw. Are we good? We're all good? We dare up? Stuff will... We're all good, up, James. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the podcast. Please feel free to leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you thought about this movie if you ended up watching it, and we're sorry. Or uh, let us know what you want to watch instead, because we want to watch something instead. Uh, please don't forget to leave a like um, and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're trying to grow our base. Appreciate all the support on there. Uh, additionally, go follow us on Instagram at Flix underscore fellows. We're very, uh, you know very active on there feel free to you know comment on our stuff we'll talk right back to you um and i believe that's all i got fellas that's all i got ciao ciao for now bye see ya